Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Not so long ago I had a chance to try out Logitech's budget model of their gaming headset, the G231, and today I will be taking a closer look at one of its main competitor, the recently released HyperX Cloud Stinger model. Right away on the front you can see a picture of the headset itself, together with some of the main features pointed out, as well as a big red strip on the top with listed out supported platforms, which is basically all of them since it uses a 3.5mm 4-pin DTRS connection, and you can see a mention of it by going to the other side of the packaging. Back there you will also come across onto some talk about other features, followed up with few pictures of the headset. Sliding out the box and opening it up, here we have some promotional material for other HyperX products, together with the headset's user manual, again some silica gel, gonna send it to Jack from the Unbox Therapy, additional extension cable which before all serves as an adapter cable, you'll see later on why, and here's the headset itself. Right away you'll be greeted by this barebone industrial design so to speak, utilizing plastic construction with sort of rough like finish, which maybe doesn't look so appealing or that it suggests that you are holding something of a greater build quality. Personally I didn't like it that much in terms of its looks, but the headset itself is actually really sturdy and decent build quality wise, while on the other hand it's understandable to have some drawbacks as they have to cut corners somewhere in order to make a more budget friendly model. Despite of that, that Stinger has a lot of headroom in terms of adjustment, the ear cups can move in basically every direction, they can swivel and tilt, while of course the headband's length can be adjusted, and you can also notice that it has an inner metal support and construction, which is always appreciated. As there is no inline control on the cable, on the bottom right ear cup you will find a physical slider, which acts like a volume knob, pretty cool and unique, and above all easy to use. On the left ear cup you can see the microphone boom, it simply rotates up and down. Again, as there is no inline control on the cable, the microphone is automatically muted when you put it in an upright position. You can also notice that it's pretty long, but it's really adjustable and flexible as it's made out of rubber material. It has a built-in passive noise cancelling system and you're probably wondering how does it sound, so here's a sample of that. This raw audio recording was done using the microphone on the HyperX Stinger headset. Feel free to tell me how does it sound in the comment section below, is it any good to you? I think that it's actually pretty decent for a microphone from a gaming headset, warm and clear sounding, with some minor static interference, possibly due to its analog connection or some other component in the middle. For connecting up, beside the fixed 1.3 meter long rubber cable which has a 3.5 mm 4 pin TTRS connection end that embeds audio in and out connections in one connector, so it makes it suitable for consoles, some notebooks, smartphones and other devices, you can also use the additional 1.7 meter long adapter cable with standard separate 3.5 mm audio in and out jacks. Since it uses this typical analog connection and not an USB one, lack of software support is imminent which is a downside, but then again it's understandable considering the segment it falls into. In terms of the use and wearing them, they are easily one of the more comfortable gaming headsets out there, even on the long run. It's before all very light, and the memory padding on its headband and ear cups is really soft, while it also didn't make me sweat during extended use. Speaking of the ear cups, in them you'll find a 50mm dynamic driver with impedance being 30 ohms. It's delivering quite a decent sound profile for its segment, although it doesn't offer that much punch on the bass side, just being warm and lower volume, while it offers very clean and contrast mid and highs, which shines the most when watching movies or when picking up noise direction in games. It's maybe not that suitable for music listening as they are pretty flat, although they can get really loud without much distortion, but overall I was really satisfied, especially if you have in mind that this is a gaming headset first, and also when you count in the fact that it can be found around and under $50, probably even less if you come across onto a good deal, for which are HyperX Cloud Series known for.
That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of the HyperX Stinger gaming headset. Feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like this video, it helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to the Tactic YouTube channel or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.